Anyway, that's a short part of the history. I can rant on and on for hours with boring war stories, with political machinations, with spy and espionage intrigue, with political disasters, with you know neocons, Democrats, with local corruption, you name it, I got it. Unfortunately, I lived through all of it. Well, fortunately, I lived through all of it. <laughs> Although I gotta say, some days I doubt. Um, let me just say this segue. Last time I was in Afghanistan, this is the final, final remark. <laughs> Last time I was in Afghanistan was September 2009. I hadn't been there for six years. CNN said, go back, you know, do your thing, be an idiot, tell us about the war. I went back to my hometown of Kandahar, the birthplace of the Taliban. That's where I'd lived. After they blew up the Red Cross, after they blew up you know, the Americans, after they blew up everybody, everyone fled that city, Kandahar, in 2002. There was only one idiot who stayed. And that's because the drug lords had signed off, the Taliban had signed off, the Karzai government had signed off, the police had signed off, the Americans had signed off. Don't screw this up and we won't kill you. So I was able to stay. A unique experience and insight that I would suggest few Australians or few Westerners can claim to have at this juncture. Others will surpass me, but God, I know the Taliban. I live with those boys. They ring me here. <laughs> I'm not joking. So uh, how's it going, boys? Jihad, jihad, jerga, jerga, you know. Um, Afghanistan's a mess, as you all know. Some here know that I have a particular bugbear about the conflict in Afghanistan right now. Um, General David Petraeus, the American commander who's running that war, the one who you know, saved the Iraq war, is a very dear, close, personal friend of mine, as are a lot of the commanders there, even some Aussies. I've never done an official Aussie MBIB. I'd really like to. They tell me it's six months. Um, point being, our troops are bleeding, sweating and dying in Afghanistan in a charming, charming little hellhole part of the world called Rosgun province. It's a province I know like the back of my hand, trust me. I know what they're going through. <laughs> they deserve all our respect. And they deserve to be taken care of when they come home. But you all don't know that. Because they're over there now, as they have been, fighting in a vacuum, in silence. Now, you can argue politically inconvenient for the succeeding governments to tell you about remind the fact that we're in an unpopular or sometimes popular war. Whatever, I don't care. We're not doing justice. We're not honouring their service. And that really offends me. I put a lot of the blame for that on the media. But also, people, we get the media and we get the governments that we deserve. Can you imagine my outrage end of last year sitting in South Bank I actually bought a 4 a.m. plane ticket to Canberra. I am glad I never used. A parliamentary debate after nine years? And we, a so-called parliamentary debate. That's not my point. You know, none of us individually are responsible for that in this room. Collectively, we all are. Um, my point being this, please take care of the diggers when they come home. You have no idea what's happening to them. You have no idea where they're ending up. Do you know how many since 9-11 Australian soldiers have served just in Afghanistan? Nothing like the Americans, thank God. But would anyone care to take a punt? We have a standing army of 55,000 soldiers. 
20,500 individual Aussies have gone to Afghanistan. That doesn't count repeats. 40,500 have served in Iraq and or Afghanistan. And there's going to be quite a few more to go yet. I have PTSD. I have traumatic brain injury from explosions. I'm having trouble adjusting. Trust me, so are they. 6RAR is based here in Brisbane. When their lads were copping it last year, middle of last year, when their boys, five or six of them went down, I went to every one of their services. I just want to say this. You won't realise this, or it might be hard to understand, and we've, I've eaten up all my time to explain it, but the Australian soldiers who are bleeding, sweating and dying in Rosgun province in Afghanistan, part of Greater Kandahar, are doing so for reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with Osama bin Laden and that have absolutely nothing, if anything at all, to do with Mullah Omar and the Afghan Taliban. That's a fact. The reason that war is being prosecuted, why it's being perpetuated for now, and this may be a leap, but which is why I don't have time to explain it. Our troops are over there going through what they're going through because India and Pakistan don't get along. I mean, that's the tr honest truth of it. If you have any doubts, ask the American Pentagon, ask the um, director of the CIA. The Taliban, Afghan Taliban, not Pakistan Taliban, forget them. Afghan Taliban, the ones coming and killing our boys, trained by the Pakistani intel, trained years ago by the CIA. They can only conduct their insurgency if they have safe places to run back to, which is Pakistan. Pakistan, to many degrees, provides that to them. It's a thorny relationship. Imagine trying to herd those cats, huh? Why does Pakistan do that? It doesn't arm them. It doesn't really train them anymore, but of course it does a little bit. So why does it give them sanctuary? America's not happy. The international community's not happy. Well, they want to see these guys continuing to disrupt and destabilise the situation in neighbouring Afghanistan, a country on their border, a country they perceive to be a client state of India. Not entirely without merit. India would rival, I think, only China for the amount of billions of dollars of aids being pumped, aid being pumped in. When Ahmed Shah Massoud, the Afghan anti-Taliban commander, was the last man standing before 9-11, there was only one valley, the Panjshir, that had yet to be taken by the Taliban. Ahmed Shah Massoud, a charismatic northern leader, held that. He did so with nothing. He begged the West to help him, but we didn't care before 9-11. No one did. The Americans were even contemplating a de facto recognition of the Taliban. Hamid Karzai, the now president, who used to be America's boy and now is their brat, was going to be the Taliban uh, representative at the United Nations. And I know Hamid quite well and his brother. They're kind of hurry like me. When Ahmed Shah Massoud was there standing, the American CIA was giving him nothing because it would annoy the Pakistanis. The French would give him something. The Brits wouldn't give him much because it would annoy the Pakistanis. To the very end, because you know this warlord, this anti-Taliban warlord, two days before 9-11, Osama bin Laden assassinated him because he knew the Americans will come to Afghanistan. And if they come here, there's only one Johnny on the spot they can go to. So on September 9, 2001, Osama bin Laden arranged it so two Arab journalists went in to interview him and detonated their camera. At that time, when no one was giving him aid, just pittance, New Delhi was still building him hospitals in the Punjab. 
still providing training and arms. Why? Because they knew that would piss off the Pakistani. In the end, by some miracle, the last man standing won. The Taliban side, the Pakistani-sponsored side, lost. Kabul became a satellite, a client of New Delhi. India runs the Afghan secret police. India trains the Afghan army officers, sends them to Delhi. This, that, the other. Lots of funding, lots of this. Pakistan's not happy about that. They went and car bombed the Indian embassy in Kabul. Huge blast. Killed a lot of people. Nine months later, a friend of mine, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mullen, released the signal intercepts between the Pakistani spy chiefs talking to the bombers before they did it. In response, India rebuilt its big embassy even bigger and then opened two consulates in Afghan border towns next to Pakistan to serve Indian populations at precisely zero. A long ramp. The Taliban and the other terrorist groups exist, are allowed to exist only in Pakistan. And let's not forget the guys who did Mumbai. The terror cells that we're grabbing here from Lashkar e Toiba. Do you know who created Lashkar e Toiba? Then President Kuvez Mushara. They were a semi official paramilitary organization sponsored by the government. Kuvez admitted it to me himself. His ISI director Bradley boasted of it. He said, they're a great force multiplier. Those Islamic psychopaths tied down an entire Indian division in the Kashmir. That's our greatest al-Qaeda threat here. People like Lashkar e Toiba, they're the ones we're rolling up. The guys who did Mumbai, still links to the uh, Pakistani government. All of which just feeds into for me to say, I wish there was something we could do so that our boys didn't have to keep coming home in body bags and coming home wounded for the rest of their lives.